Okay, welcome back everyone to BC213, our second lecture today on the end times. Um, we're looking at the signs of the end times. There's a question on the chat. How do we understand 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 in the light of what we are learning? So it goes right in with this the point that we were just discussing about the great deception that would take place, uh, false spirituality. So Paul did mention, you know, Second Thessalonians 2 verse 3, that there will be a falling away. He said there will be, uh, uh, the falling away comes first. So there's going to be a lot of people, and 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 he wrote about that in First Timothy four one and two. It's going to be a lot of people who will depart from the faith, and he describes the condition of man. So uh, it's in line with this sign number eleven that we just spoke about: the falling away, coming first, people departing from the faith, uh, being giving into deception. Point number 12, the 12th sign, uh, this is a, a Gabriel, Angel Gabriel. He spoke to Daniel in Daniel 12 verse 4. And he said, uh, Daniel, you, you know, you write, keep the words of this book. And he said, in the time of the end, many will run to and fro and knowledge will increase. Many will go to and fro. They'll be traveling a lot. Many will travel a lot. And knowledge will increase. So both these signs are so apt or relevant to the times in which we live. Right? We are living in a day and a time when people are going to and fro. You know, every day, uh, literally hundreds of thousands of people traveling you know, we are living in that time and knowledge is increasing you now the amount of information that's being put out and the access to knowledge has exploded you know we can on our device we literally have like huge amounts of information available we can search we have access to it so we're living in a time where Daniel 12.4 is being fulfilled. It's happening. Right? And uh, of course, there are some articles that you can read. And uh, these are a little old, but you can look at a lot of information where it's you know constantly, constantly information is exploding. A few other signs just to just that, and we are familiar with, and these are taken from. Matthew 24 and Luke 21, uh, there will be wars, uh, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Now, it is true that wars and fighting has, have been going on through the centuries. It's not something new. Um, so, and in fact, all the next the, the next few signs, they, they have been happening all along. But what we can expect to see is things happening in a much larger scale and in a more uh, larger number. More nations, more countries, uh, you know, happen, fighting is happening, right? So there's unrest, there is fighting happening just about everywhere. Nation after nation, you will be hearing about that, and which is going on, and it's increasing. Similarly, number 14, uh, fear, hate, terror, um, men's hearts failing them from fear. I mean, there is going to be so much distress. There is going to be fear, hate, that people's hearts are gripped by fear. You know, what's happening? The hate, the violence. People are living in fear. You know, And that's, again, increasing, increasing more and more. And so even in, in, in places where what once used to be very peaceful, now it is becoming 
hey, be careful where you're going. <laughs> what is happening? You never know. Uh, some bomb threat here and this, that, and all. But these used to be peaceful places, peaceful cities. There's fear coming because of uh, hate and terror that's happening. Similarly, there's uh, weather conditions. There's a great earthquakes, famines, pestilences. Again, these have always been happening, but there will be an increase in these things, happening more, more widely. Uh, earthquakes, famines, pestilences, plagues, epidemics. Again, we are, we, we under recognize that. Right? So these are things that will happen. Jesus said these will be things happening. And the moral condition of man, number 17, the last one. She said, lawlessness will abound. Lawlessness. People will not care about the law. Lawlessness. I was just reading in, I think, Haiti or some country that is now taken over by uh, some other country. I forget. Gangs are running the country. It's no longer government. Gangs. We are running the country. Taken over. So lawlessness will abound. Love of many grow cold. People no more love, no more love, no more compassion. That's all gone. Yeah. So as in the days of Noah, they were just eating and drinking, and there's immorality and violence. These things. So the, even the moral condition of man becomes very bad. Now sin was always there. From Adam's time, but in this time, just before the end of the day, end of the age, this is going to reach its peak. So these are some of the signs that we, you know, we keep looking at, and we say, okay, um, whatever the Lord Jesus said, these things have or are being fulfilled. It's happening right before us. And then there are some of the bigger signs, I mean, major, major things about Israel, Jerusalem, the church, the, the alignment of the nations and other things, which are all telling us we are very close to the end. We are reaching the very end of things. So for us as believers, uh, I think we should uh, be students of Scripture. That means we understand what the Scriptures are telling us. At the same time, we should be informed. So read the news. Uh, be aware of what's happening globally. So that you can look back and say, hey, the Bible said this. It is happening. But we are not alarmed, we are not preoccupied with that. Our main responsibility now is to take the gospel to the nations and to help bring the church to a place of maturity. So two things. On one side, we need the gospel to reach people. On the other side, the church has to be brought to a place of unity and strength and maturity to be a glorious church. That is our work. That's the work we have. That's why he has put us here. That's what we are working on. Why are you here? Well, two reasons, right? I have to reach, we have to reach the world, we have to reach the nations with the gospel. And then we have to strength build the church to bring the church to a place where it is a glorious church. Because Jesus is coming back for that. While we are doing that, that's our work. We keep ourselves busy with that. And while we are doing that, we are also looking at the signs. This is what is happening. We can see that everything is aligning towards the coming of the Lord. And so we live in a state of readiness. That if the Lord Jesus comes, we will be ready to be taken up to meet the Lord in the air. So let's take some time for questions and some discussion. Go ahead. Pastor, uh, um, this is a general question. like. 
uh, there are many pastors and preachers uh, depends upon the seasons uh, that had happened there are any situations like something global issues or like tsunamis or uh, some political reasons so there are many preachers who have been preaching uh, depending upon these things that lord is coming soon this is the sign this is the sign and 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 there is no particular proof for that just be, just by observing uh, something happening something happening the preaching god is coming soon this is the sign like because of that there are so many confusions happening and and the people who are speaking against us uh and all christians and preachers can we do that in our uh, when we are preaching like like do we have to take it as important things or mm. yeah i under i understand what you're saying and i will just share my approach so one of the things that uh, and i would i would also encourage all of us is not to be alarming like you know don't oh something happened then immediately one oh jesus is coming tomorrow like you know like that yeah you know like maybe some vol volcano erupted maybe there was an earthquake maybe there's tsunami uh, maybe there's a fighting happening uh, or you know for example last october when there was this fighting that broke out between the palestinians and israel so many people were preaching sermons on israel and thing you know i purposely never did anything just kept quiet why because i don't want to be an alarmist right so these battles these things are happening all the time right it's always happening you know so there have been seven, so, so many incidents between the palestinians and israel it's not like this is the first time they are fighting it's always happened like, yeah maybe on a scale like this it hasn't happened before or in recent times but these things are happening so we don't want to be alarmists that means take advantage of some situation and uh, you know uh, build up emotion of people and and, and so, no preach the truth paul said preach the truth in season and out of season that means we'll talk about the end times when something happens and even when nothing happens because the word of god still reads the same right so our approach should be you know and I, I, my, my approach is don't unnecessarily take advantage of the situation yes people will have questions you address the questions but address in a very calm way don't you know create a lot of emotion and hype and just because something happened um we do want people are having questions and we do want to address the questions but don't do it in a in an alarming way don't don't you know create hype and emotion and all those things in other way, otherwise just for example we we talk about the end times but even we talk we talk about the end times even nothing seems to be happening this is what the scripture said right so that's a better approach because then we are not uh building something based on the emotions of people but rather saying telling people look at the truths look at the word of god in season out of season this is what the bible says okay? so uh that's our approach and sometimes intentionally i don't say anything is it hey, okay you know we don't want to build on the hype and The, the, just because of using the situation because uh, like in normal normal sermons also there are people who are using the situations what are happening just in there is a video i just went through uh, like this the someone is uh, marriage happening right so he told like in a video i'm my life is not a not like a rose petals i also gone through so many struggles so there is one pastor who was telling see uh the richest man of uh, asia is also gone through situation because there is no jesus in his life because there is no no jesus in his life uh -huh. so there are pastors who are preaching like this day right? so we should not better not to use uh, yeah that was that's yeah we never we should i would avoid jesus just because of some people's experience yeah 
I would avoid that. Instead, we just preach the words. Yeah. Any other questions? Friends, you have a question? Go ahead. Uh, Pastor, like uh, uh, we are saying about uh, Ezekiel chapter 7 and uh, chapter 37, sorry, chapter 37 and 38. Uh, and uh, like how we can be sure, like it is for now, but not for them in the Old Testament. Because even if we see in the during this time, even people were scattered. Right. So how we can take it like even this applies now. Yeah. So in chapter 38, we are seeing nations yeah. were coming. My it can be for that time also, right? So how we can be sure, like we can take it now also. Yeah. So there is uh what we say a near term fulfillment. So there's a like many of these prophecies, there will be a dual fulfillment. There's a near term and then there's a long term. Now the reason we say Ezekiel 38, 37, 37 we know, okay, the nation Israel was regathered. The reason we say Ezekiel 38 is in the future, two reasons. One, at least two or three times in chapter 38, he says, in the latter days. So he's using a phrase, which of course we cannot give a day and time, but it's speaking of in the latter times, in the later days, God will do this. That's one thing. The second thing is that this itself has not been fulfilled of even in the past. Because he mentions Gog and Magog mentions Turkey, he mentions Ethiopia, Libya, um, and some other tribes, these will come and attack Israel. Right? So we know the Babylon, I mean, we know the Assyrians came, we know the Babylonians came, uh, we know later on Israel was displaced by the, the Arabs or the Ottoman Turks. They are all from Iran or from the neighboring place. But he talks about from the far north. He talks about Rosh, Meshach, Tubal. He talks about Ethiopia and Libya joining them and Persia joining them. You know, so that in itself we haven't seen yet. So two reasons is okay. We know there is a near-term fulfillment. Yeah, Israel was dispersed from its land, and they have been gathered, regathered. We know that. So there's a near term. But there are some elements in Ezekiel 38 which are yet in the future, because he says, in the latter times, and this is what's going to happen. So that's why it's OK. This is going to happen. Then we also say, OK, let us see what happens in the book of Revelation. So even in the book of Revelation, God says, the river Euphrates will dry up so that the armies from the east will begin to come against Israel. Again, we see in Daniel chapter 12, uh, actually chapter 11, I think. Let me just point out to you. We will study this next year. Um, yeah. Uh, in Daniel 11. Um, he talks about, uh, I'm looking at basically verses 40 to 45, um, when he talks about the king of the south, the king of the north, coming against him, uh, and he will enter the glorious land. And uh, uh, verse 44, news from the east and the north will trouble him. So this hymn that's being referred to, uh, is talking about the king, uh, and we will read the context. Look at it. Uh, it's talking about this king who will, uh, this man who will speak blasphemies against God, and which, when we compare it with the earlier chapters of Daniel, 
Daniel 7, 8, and 9, we know that it is uh, this, this Antichrist who speaks blasphemies against God. And uh, so he says here in verse 44, Daniel 11, 44, news from the east and the north will trouble him. So it, this, it goes along with Ezekiel 38, it goes along with Revelation 16. You know, so we put it all together and say, okay, yeah. So there are certain prophecies, uh, parts of the uh, Daniel, Daniel 11, uh, which is yet to be fulfilled. And it goes with what we read in other passages of scripture. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Um, Pastor, the whole world knows that the Israel belong to Jews. And there are archaeological evidences also. Then why they are um, why they want to divide the uh, land like everybody want to divide the land of the Jews, but the truth is like this belong this was theirs before. The world knows about it. Then why are they so again because of God intended that way or? Uh... So the question, you know, why do people want to divide up the land of Israel? So we know that so we go back in time so we know that god promised Ab abraham said from the river euphrates till the river nile in the south from the mediterranean sea to the river jordan that whole land i'm giving to you and your descendants so god spoke so that is what abraham believed he came but when they came they had to dispossess or displace the tribes who were already living there. Right? And again, we can't prove this, but some people say that the Palestinians were the Philistines who were living there. So remember when King David came and Saul, and I mean, not before even Saul, I mean, Saul was there, and they had to fight against these. Philistines, many tribes. I'm mean, Philistines, one of the tribes. So they came, they dispossessed. I mean, they conquered those other tribes, like Jericho, or all those. And they had to conquer. Meaning, there were people living there. They had to fight and conquer, and they had to possess the land. So God promised them the land. But the Palestinians are there. Some people trace them back to the Philistines. So they also say, we were here. Right? So, and they are there right now. The Palestinians are there. So they also are looking for a land, for a place for them to live. Where will they go? So, the whole question is, how are we going to resolve this peacefully? The only solution that people can propose is, OK, you let them stay peacefully. You stay on your side. You let them stay on their side. Right? So uh, that's that's the conflict going on. Any question from those online? Oh. Okay. Okay. Another question on chat. In Matthew, referring to the days of Noah, it is talking of total disregard for the things of God and totally involved with themselves. Is this talking about the world in general or the church as well? So that we would take to refer to the world, right? So Noah's time, Noah feared God. So there was him and his family who feared God. But the people around, they mocked him, they laughed at him, and they were living in 
total disregard uh, of anything that Noah was saying. So when, when Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, he's referring to the way the world would be, uh, that they would be just living like that, as in the days of Noah. This also is in line with what Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, where he describes the condition of people in the latter times. Like he says, uh, they will be without, you know, uh, let me just look at that. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, he says, verses, you know, verses 1 to 9. He says, in the last days, perilous times will come and men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, and so on and so forth. Basically describing the condition of people in the last days, the people in the world. So that would be uh, whom Jesus is referring to as in the days of Noah. Right. For the church, the warning is people will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. There will be a falling away. So that's what we will see in the church, people falling away in the world as in the days of Noah. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All right. So we're going to stop here for today. Next week, I'm just going to do a full revision. I will start from the beginning, go through everything. So we may take one class or maybe two classes. Uh, full revision. So um, again, you you know, we'll be open to asking any questions. And then after that, I'll just give you one final exam. That's it. Huh? One exam will have three parts. So <laughs> as usual, right? One exam, uh, which I'll put up uh, within after, ne after next week's class, uh, which will cover the whole thing. As usual, it's an open book exam, open Bible exam. But it's like a review. Right? It'll start from beginning to the end. Just check everything. Basically, be clear in your understanding of the end times and the sequence of events, right? So next week is going to be full revision. So please um, uh, come prepared to ask any questions about the end times and uh, what we have covered in this course. Uh, what we will do next year in the third year, uh, third year course is we will go into detail of Daniel and Revelation. We'll read verse by verse and we'll explain everything. But that, that connected to what we learned in this course will give us a clear picture of the end times. We'll be very clear. Uh, both This is an overview course. That one is uh, verse by verse. We will look at uh, Daniel Revelation, other, other scripture passages. But next week, any questions, uh, come prepared so we can take those questions. It is going to be, I think, will be our last uh, lectures. After that will be one final exam. Okay, let's close in prayer. Anyone can close in prayer, please, and we will dismiss. Father God, we thank you. We thank you and bless, bless you for this time you have given us, Lord. Lord, help us to be very watchful and help us to cling more to Jesus and your word, Lord, in these last days. Father, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. God bless. Bye.